Hi, I'm Leila Bloom and I'm the art curator at the University of Leeds. Welcome to the Stanley and Audrey Burton Gallery. The gallery was set up in 1970 with support from Stanley Burton, a local philanthropist and the director of the famous Burton tailoring business. In the past 50 years, what began as uh, two small rooms in the iconic Parkinson building has grown into a large professional accredited museum. Together with our sister gallery, the Treasures of the Brotherton Gallery, down the hall in Parkinson, we program a regular series of changing exhibitions and events for staff, students and the general public alike. Here at the gallery, we can share the treasures and beauties of the University of Leeds art collection. The University of Leeds art collection comprises some three and a half thousand artworks. This includes painting, sculpture, works on paper and even ceramics. We're also responsible for a growing collection of public art all around campus. The collection's strengths are in 20th century British art. We have work dating from as far back as the 16th century, but our focus is 20th and 21st century British work. Among the many highlights in the University of Leeds art collection is this glorious depiction of Whitelock's Ale House by Maurice de Somres of 1955. Alumni may remember that this is the oldest pub in Leeds, established in 1715 off Brigitte down Turk's Head Yard. When Maurice de Somres was appointed the first head of fine art at this university in 1949, he wrote to his mother that it was a rather puzzling task. He had no staff, no students, and absolutely no specific program for what to do with this uh, new department. What he came up with was very creative, however. He brought together the practice of fine art with the teaching of art history. In 2015, we held a centenary exhibition exploring the art of Morris de Somres, and in honor of the centenary year, we purchased this new painting by Morris de Somres of the same year, 1955, Tuscan Summer. It shows the variety of the artist's practice, everything from the realism of white locks to the more cubist interpretation of Tuscan Summer. The Gregory Fellowships at the University of Leeds was a pioneering artisan residence scheme that was set up with Eric Gregory, a publisher in Bradford, Herbert Reed, T.S. Eliot, and Bonamy Dobre. Here we have two examples of Gregory Fellows in painting in our collection. This work by Terry Frost, Mars, Red, Yellow, and Brown, we know was in the collection of Herbert Reed himself. The university purchased it in 2001. Behind me is a work by Alan Davy, Opus 149, Figure Mask Number 2. Alan Davy at this point was working in a way inspired by the idea of randomness and Jung. He would lay several boards down on the ground and splash his paint around, similar to the way Jackson Pollock was working. Later he would look back and choose the most successful of these canvases. This spectacular multimedia canvas is by Catherine Holmes, one of Yorkshire's beloved artists. It depicts Gordell Scar, which alumni may remember near Malham as a wonderful place for hiking and days out. Catherine Holmes has lived by this her entire life. In fact, her family, three generations back, has lived at the same cottage in Malham, and her mother and grandmother were also artists. So she chooses to depict this um, in much of her work. Catherine, in contrast to her mother and grandmother's style, um, includes elements of the landscape that she is depicting. So here you can see elements of gravel and stone and even grass integrated within her paint. It was purchased from the artist following her exhibition in 1999. Um, and we've held another exhibition since of Catherine and her mother Philippa and grandmother Constance's work all together in 2009 called a Malham family of painters. In 2009, after the death of Audrey Burton in 2008, the Audrey and Stanley Burton Charitable Trust gave an exceptional donation of paintings to the University Art Collection. Among them, this wonderful painting by Stanley Spencer of 1929, the art class. Designed as a commission for the Empire Marketing Board, um, it was to depict scenes of industry and themes of peace but unfortunately was never produced as a poster. However, we're left with this wonderful depiction by Spencer of an art class, and it is infused with Spencer's unique spirituality. Stanley Spencer 
saw Christianity in the everyday. And in this painting, you can see elements from the Christian story. You can see on these students' boards, a hint of the cross, of the nails, the theme perhaps of an altar piece, the blue outfits reminiscent of Mary in her traditional depiction, and as well symbols of music, perhaps related to um, church life. From 1911, this university benefited from the extraordinary leadership of its vice chancellor, Sir Michael Sadler, who was here from 1911 to 1923. Among many other things, Sadler was a collector of contemporary art, and he was the first to bring contemporary art and discussion about contemporary art to this university. When he left in 1923, he left a wonderful group of pictures, painting and works on paper to the university art collection. One of which is this early and quite exceptional work by Ben Nicholson of 1914. Though Ben Nicholson is better known as an abstract artist, and his work of the mid-century is connected with Barbara Hepworth um, and Henry Moore. In this piece, we see the young artist influenced much more by his father, William Nicholson. Another work that Sadler collected is this one, Vanessa Bell's Triple Alliance. Triple Alliance is a very early collage produced in Britain. The artist here, responding to the events of the First World War, has collaged newsprint referring to the conflict into her painting. As well, she's included an element of collage, which is a check made out to her as an artist. In part due to Sadler's creative collecting of the early 20th century, the university has gone on to collect further pieces to fit in with this era. One example is this work, a portrait of Nina Hamnett by Roger Fry of 1917. It's an important painting that shows Nina Hamnett, a member of the Omega Workshops, displaying the wares of this important artistic workshop in London. Omega Workshops produced objects for the home designed by artists. She sits on pillows decorated with mod pattern and the dress she wears is the design of the Omega Workshops as well. Ben Reed, Herbert Reed's youngest son, was an important art historian and advocate for the arts in his own right. After studying English literature at Queen's College at Oxford, he went on to study art history at the Courtauld Institute. He later taught at the Courtauld Institute and was also appointed deputy wit librarian in its photographic libraries. Ben came back to Leeds um, to work in the School of Fine Art, History of Art and Cultural Studies in 1990. He was at director of its MA Sculpture Studies, which was a collaboration with the Henry Moore Foundation. When the Henry Moore Institute was established three years later, Ben was a driving force behind this new organization. Ben was a most beloved teacher here at the University of Leeds. His students remember his lectures as being incredibly enthusiastic, well-researched and full of juicy anecdotes. Of course, being the son of Herbert Reed, he remembers quite personally stories of Moore and Hepworth hanging about the house. When he died in October 2016, Benedict Reed, Ben to those who knew him, left a substantial bequest of over a hundred artworks to the University Art Collection. Many of these came through his father, Herbert Reed, and relate to the many connections he had with artists and theorists during his lifetime. Others are Ben's alone. They're connected to artists around Yorkshire and colleagues in the Department of Fine Art, but also relating to Ben's own passion for Victorian sculpture. Though Ben had wide-ranging knowledge of art history, his particular passion was for Victorian sculpture. His 1982 book entitled Victorian Sculpture by Yale University Press is still the key text on the subject. Herbert Reed, his father, did not rate Victorian art. In particular, he felt that Victorian sculpture had been a complete waste of time. Ben disagreed and perhaps rebelling against his father, fell in love with the subject. He describes how he first fell in love with Victorian sculpture. He was standing outside Manchester Town Hall, admiring the facade, when he stepped back and bumped into one of the formidable sculptures outside. He remembered thinking to himself, my daddy never told me about things like that. From then began a lifelong love of the subject. Ben's advice for anyone interested in sculpture was simply to look around them. 
In any British city, there's a wealth of Victorian sculpture to enjoy, free of cost. Ben ran a mischievously titled module for his students called the Tight Trousered School, where he took his students on field trips around the country to see Victorian sculpture. He always encouraged his students to see the works in the round and en plein air, outdoors. Ben was a huge advocate of Victor not only Victorian sculpture, but art in general, and hugely important for this city and this country. He was longtime chairman of the Public Monuments and Sculpture Association, as well as of Leeds Art Collections Fund. He was also a great friend to the Stanley and Audrey Burton Gallery, always prepared to give a last minute talk, chair a discussion, or lend works from his own collection to our exhibitions. When he passed away, we lost a very dear friend and advocate of art in this city. This little sketch of Helios and Rhodes by Frederick Leighton is a study for a larger painting held at the Tate, which is unfortunately not on show because it is in poor condition. Leighton is important to Ben Reed because his sculpture of 1877 was seen to inaugurate the new sculpture movement um, in British sculpture. The new sculpture broke away from neoclassical Greek and Roman inspired examples with a new dynamism and involved mythology and uh, a greater energy um, in British sculpture. Frederick Leighton was one of the key members of the pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood. Another important member we can see here in another item of the bequest, John Everett Mia. This little drawing of Edmund Ironside, Godwin serving as a guide to Ulf, the Danish chief, is fascinating if you look at the date, 1843. This is a very youthful 14-year-old artist. Mia was a child prodigy and came to London to study art, was the youngest student admitted to the RA at the age of 11. In 1843, when this work was produced, he won his first silver medal at the RA. Another artist who was inspired by Leighton is this one, Sir William Hamo Thornycroft. Thornycroft, who came from a family of sculptors, is now best known for the many public sculptures around London that we can see today. This little sketch of a standing male nude shows his interest in realistic modeling. This was a hallmark of the new sculpture style, which was interested instead of idealized forms, realistic bodies. One of his sculptures, Courage, in this exhibition and given to us uh, through the Ben Reed bequest, is one of the four allegorical figures on the large scale public monument to Gladstone in the Strand in London. She's a perfect example of the new sculpture ethos. She is no retiring lady. She's a strong, muscled woman who is protecting her child from a snake. Within the Benedict Reed bequest, there are several examples of etchings by Alphonse Le Gros. Alphonse Le Gros was a French etcher, sculptor, and painter who moved to Britain on the advice of his friend Whistler in 1863. He became an important teacher and was responsible in, in part for leading the British etching revival. This work, Charity, was published in the Art Journal in 1881 and depicts one of Le Gros' favorite subjects, French peasant life. Le Gros was influenced by Gustave Courbet and Goya, and often included themes of poverty and death in his work. This little pencil drawing by Paul Clay, 1926, is, is an example of the type of work that came through the Benedict Reed bequest from his father, Herbert Reed. Herbert Reed would have first come across Paul Clay here at Leeds. We know that he saw the collection of Sir Michael Sadler and Sadler collected Clay. We also know that Herbert Reed snuck into Sadler's house to see his art collection. Reed's mother knew Sadler's housekeeper and through this connection, he managed to gain access to see Sadler's pictures. However, he might also have seen the work on campus or with the Leeds Arts Club, as Sadler also exhibited his work on campus and for the club members. In this picture, Rao Farai, which translates as a, a type of scuffle, we see the type of work that Herbert Reed appreciated of Paul Clay's, uh, made at the time he was teaching at the Bauhaus. He believed that Clay's work showed an emergent formlessness and that the pencil was dreaming along the paper. 
This little collage by Kurt Schwitters of 1947, created just before the artist's deaths, is inscribed for Herbert Reed. Schwitters was an important Dada artist, constructivist, and otherwise multi-talented German artist. He created an amazing home in Germany called a Merzebau, which was covered with his own compositions. Unfortunately, when he had to escape Nazi persecution, he had to reform this home, this Merzebo, in Norway, and finally had to move a third time to England, where he set up his final Merzebo, which is unfinished, um, in the Lake District. What is left of this is now preserved at the Hatton Gallery in Newcastle. Next to that is a work, Minotaur, Monster Pond, by Paul Nash an important British artist that Herbert Reed supported throughout his lifetime. Paul Nash is best known for declaring the advance of Unit One, a group of artists uh, in 1933 who would encompass the two modern strands of art, the abstract and the surreal. This composition, Minotaur, is actually a scene of a lake, but rendered in a strange and surreal manner. Herbert wrote about Nash several times throughout his life for the listener, as well as books written throughout his lifetime and after his death. This little lead sculpture by Austin Wright is an example of a work by one of our Gregory Fellows in sculpture. Austin Wright came to Leeds in 1961 and stayed until 1964. This means he was one of the fellows appointed by Herbert Reed after the death of Eric Gregory in 1959. Herbert Reed stayed on to continue appointing fellows for the university until his own death in 1968. It was included in the major exhibition related to Herbert Reed, A British Vision of World Art at Leeds Art Gallery in 1993. Herbert Reed, when looking back on the scheme, felt it was one of the most encouraging examples of creativity in this country at the time and was rightfully very proud of his accomplishments in this area. Thank you very much for listening. Ruth and I now look forward to taking your questions in the Q&A session.